This is giving you an example of a visual representation for limits. And sometimes I think that's the toughest for students to understand is looking at a picture, seeing the difference between where limits exist, where they don't exist, and where functions are defined, and are those the same point. So we're going to go through this problem together and look at them one at a time. So over here, first question, what's the limit as x approaches 0? So what that's saying is you want to go to 0 on your x-axis and look from the left and right side, so I like to draw little arrows, I like to do little finger tests where you're showing, are they approaching the same height? And what you'll see is yes, they are approaching the same height, and not only that, you can tell exactly that that height is 1. So we would see that the limit as x approaches 0 would be 1. The second one wants to know what happens as the limit as x approaches 2. So what you want to do is come over to 2, here's 2, and you want to come from the left side, so now going this way towards 2, and the right side, this way, and what you notice is there's a gap. If you did the finger test, your fingers wouldn't touch, and that's a problem. We cannot say that we have an overall limit there because we don't have a single a height that it's approaching. So for this limit, we would say that the limit does not exist, and we can abbreviate that DNE. For the third one, we want to know what about the limit as x approaches 4. So again, we're still doing the same thing, going over to 4. We'll see what happens as we approach 4 from the left and 4 from the right. This time it looks kind of like a little parabola piece. And again, your answer is your height. So what height is it approaching? First of all, is it approaching the same height? Yes, you could definitely see that those arrows would run into each other. The height, you can come over here and look and count. The height would be 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So my limit is negative 4. Now that's a little different than what these next two questions are asking. These two questions are not asking for the limit. It doesn't want to know what it's approaching. It wants to know where it is defined. So the number in your parentheses, that is called your argument, it's your x value. So this is saying when x is 2, where is the y defined at? So we're going to go to 2 and we want to see where it's defined. Well, we've got two points here. This is an open circle, meaning that is not included. That is not a point in your graph. This is your closed circle. That is where your function is defined, and that has a y value of 1. So even though the limit didn't exist at 2, we can still get an actual answer for f of 2. Difference between where it's defined and where the limit is. And then the fifth one, what is f of negative 4? So this is saying if I go to x equals negative 4, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, where is it defined, or is it defined? Well, first you can go up here and say, yep, definitely defined. There is a point on the graph, and then we just have to count the height. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we see that our limit, or that our function is defined at, for negative 4 at 6. And then the last one is still asking about negative 4, but this time it's looking for a limit. So we want to know when x is negative 4, same x value, when I come towards negative 4 on the left side of it and on the right side of it, above and below it, Am I getting to the same height? Yes, it would pass that finger test, they would touch, and that height, again, is the same place where it's defined, 6. So what we can see from that is it is possible to have a limit and have it defined at the same height. It's possible to ha not have a limit but have it, have it defined at a particular point. So there's a lot of options that can show up, especially with some of these graphs that are very discontinuous.